pass that half, so we got to do better than that this half. Thanks a lot, Archie Slocum. Let's take a look at our Discover Card halftime statistics and the numbers from that first 30 minutes of play. And the thing that stands out, I think, Steve, is not only the passing or lack of it by AM, but also the possession time. Well, absolutely. And that's exactly what Texas Tech wanted to do when they were on defense against AM. Control the passing game. I mean, and they've managed the running game. And then the other key point is controlling the ball, Texas Tech. And they've done that because they've had success on first and second down plays. Well, the Lethridge pass prior to those stats to Matt Dubuck gave him a first down on the 32-yard line. We've played about 30 seconds here in quarter number three. And we're going to take a break here for a second as the officials discuss what the problem was. We're glad you can be with us today. The skies are starting to clear up over college. Dead ball. Station. False start offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. It is an extremely humid day here in Texas. But we don't have any rain, and that's what we're glad of. That is only the second penalty against Texas Tech this afternoon. With increased humidity, watching the fourth quarter, who's in better shape physically? Good point. A couple of guys in maroon jerseys got a free ride from Byron Hansbart. Aspard carried the ball 21, 22 times in that first half for 82 yards, averaged a shade under four and carry. And when I talked to Rick Dykes yesterday, they actually have someone on the sidelines that monitors the number of times that Byron Hansbard is putting his hands on the ball. They want to get him the football. He's a big play man, make big plays, giving the football. Well, Spike Dykes told me at the beginning of the year how he wanted Byron Hansbard to touch it at least 30 times, either running or passing the football. He's going to get that easily today. Morris in motion, Lethridge straight drop. The pressure gets rid of it, overthrown. Hey, Sammy! Intended for Stacy Mitchell, Edward Jasper was putting a little pressure on Zebby Lethridge. Zebby is six foot. He does a wonderful job, typically, of getting good drop and where he can stand tall. He's got to throw the ball in the area, and great effort there by Dat Wynn to get up. So he's got to throw over those linebackers that are dropping into that area or that channel where that ball's got to go to complete a pass. Third down and 10 to go. On the drop play, the first down, and then some Hansford crosses the 40 down to the 38-yard line. A penalty flag is thrown and maybe a face mask. Hansbar took it at the 32-yard line, picked up 29 yards on the play, and may get a couple of more because of the flag. That is good blocking by that offensive line of Texas Tech, and it is indeed a face mask penalty. What made the play work is that Phillip Myers, 51 right there, he takes a path, an incorrect path on a blitz, and he can't put his hands on Byron Hansbart. He, they had the right call, he just took the wrong angle, and Byron was able to run right by him. On those blitzes, Phil Bennett telling us yesterday that on some of the blitzes they had to be careful because the free safety, Brandon Jennings, is so young, and they were concerned about him coming up for run support. But that was on the completely other side of the field. This time, not much room. Jasper made the first hit. Keith Mitchell also in on the tackle. Now for the 14th consecutive game, Byron Hanspard has crossed the century mark rushing the football. That is quite a record. And you know, some people have given Danny Warfel the Heisman Trophy. He has great stats. He is doing, doing a wonderful job. but. Let's not forget this young man or Troy Davis up at Iowa State. Anybody who has given that award away now, way premature. Lethridge's pass off the hands of McKenzie. Should have been caught. The disappointment for Texas Tech, as I said earlier, has been that they've dropped 28 balls. That's lack of concentration, lack of focus, and also a little bit of unpredictability and confidence in Zebby Lethridge delivering the ball where it's going to be a catchable ball. But he has thrown, I think, very well today with the pressure that he's had on him. 
The completion percentage may not be that good, but he's come up with a big play that's when right. he needed. And that's the role he has to play. Exactly. Third down and ten again. Two wide outs pressure. to the left. The pressure. Lethridge scrambling. And he is going to be dragged down from behind by Brandon Mitchell. Mitchell is 285 pounds. Steve, he caught Lethridge from behind. And and that's what's exciting about Texas A&M's front seven. I mean, watch all the pressure. You'll see it come from all over the field. 96, Brandon Mitchell will just track him down as Zebby breaks out. That is great speed by a guy that weighs 290 pounds. He had a big game in 95 versus Texas Tech. He picks up his first sack today, the fifth of the year. Jimmy, Jeremy Hernandez is going to have to kick it away, averaging almost 39 yards a kick today. And it is high. Dante Hall waves for the fair catch and gets out of the way. This time, Tech surrounds it at about the 12 yard line. A 28 yard kick. Mitchell and company still trail, but they've got the football. Zebby and the Raiders had some problems in that series. Texas A&M's defense leaving it all on the field this afternoon, led by Brandon Mitchell and everybody else. Six to three is our score. 11:36 left in the third quarter. Hall and Hardeman in the backfield. Connell and Hodge, the wide receivers. Stewart lost it up, intended for Connell. Still has not caught a ball today. Let's check in with Brian Nooner for an update on Eric Butler. Brian. Well, Eric Butler left in the first half, and we didn't see him the entire second quarter. They took him in at halftime, x-rayed his lower right leg. What they had discovered was muscle contusions. Now they've wrapped him, and they say he's uh, okay to go. He's not on the field right now, but they assure me that we will see him in the second half. Steve, he went from a possible broken leg to playing again. <laughs> he's got an S on his chest. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> that was only the second throw to Connor. He hasn't caught any yet. Second and 10, 11-31, left in the third. Stewart's pressure. Pass is dropped. Kevin McKellar is the one who is putting the pressure and getting in the face of Brandon Stewart. And a lot of coaches around the Big 12 feel that Stewart isn't very good with a lot of pressure. Well, he's, he shows sometimes happy feet, and he'll throw the ball not as effectively. That time he's not getting his shoulders squared up. He throws a ball in the dirt. Two things are happening. Good pressure on the quarterback, but second, the cornerbacks are really playing lights out in terms of being able to keep pressure on Connell where he's not catching any balls. Only the seventh third down attempt for the AM offense today. Mitchell, straight drop looking for the screen. They've got it. Great job defensively. Oh, my goodness. Paul looked like he had a lot of running room, but Jody Brown from that Raider spot coming up to make the hit. I thought he was just trying to break down the protection, Steve. Jody Hall is a fifth year senior. This is his first year to start. He's their Raider back, as you said. Tough, smart, 4-6, and the coaches say he just makes plays. He's not all that great athletically, but he just makes plays. This is a Herculean effort. He's getting blocked, and he reaches out and grabs an ankle. Oh, that's an MVP move there. The kick gets an AM bounce, and Texas Tech being very dangerous, trying to pick the ball up. Not all that smart for Clint Robertson to do that, but a 57 yard kick by Shane Leckler. Well, one thing Spike Dykes was very emphatic about is that his team has indeed improved, and that has been a tradition of a Spike Dykes team while at Texas Tech. You can see that before October 10th, what they've done. But look at the numbers after that date. <laughs> they go up. You ask any coach around the country, and they'll tell you, we look for improvement from day one. This is a good coaching staff on both sides of the ball today. I mean, Spike Dykes has been around a long time. He's in his 10th year. He is a highly regarded coach by among his peers. He really knows football, and he's done exceptionally well out in Lubbock, Texas. And Spartan looking for that block to spring him to the outside. He gets it. First down. Pick up of 13 on the play. Sean Horn had to come up and make the stop. We saw the explosiveness of the number two rusher in the conference and in the country. 
try, what they're trying to do is get him to a, they felt like if they could get him over 150 yards, Zebby Lethridge play a, a controlled, manageable game for himself, plays within his ability. What happened that time? Texas A&M took a chance on the outside. The perimeter broke down. He makes the play. First and ten, Lethridge. There's a hold, obvious hold. No flag is thrown. Texas Tech dodged a bullet as Lethridge was scrambling around. Shane Dunn just reached out and grabbed a big handful of jersey, and 72,000 plus didn't saw it. Unfortunately, there's about four or five guys that didn't see it. In stripes, they didn't quite see it. But how could you not? Well, let's see where he is. He's number 68. Let's see, is he right here? I think he's right there. There he's going to pull, and he's going to make the hold. He's going to make the hold. Let's see if we can see. Watch 68 that's right it. there. There he is. Kind of turned him this. around. Yep. Yeah, he turned him around. Typically, that's either a dance move or a hold. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go with a hold. On a pitch. Hanspar cuts against the grain before Dap Wynn is there to make the stop. Not being fooled by that move. That'll bring up a third down play, and we'll call it about six. That would be the West Texas shuffle. That was, that was that's a Texas two-step and a half, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> Officially, it's third and seven. Of course, the official's watching the ball at that point, right. and uh, he, he gets lost on that one. But good effort by uh, both teams on the play. Fans thought. Yeah, I know. And they've got enough flags. They should just throw them down on the field. Third down, 9.34 to play in the third. Jimmy Leftwich calls a timeout. It's tough to hear down there. Smart move. Wants to regroup. 9.31. Tech leads it. It is loud at Kyle Field. But these guys would trade that loudness in for a couple of points. They trail 6-3, third and six. Texas Tech, 10 of 17 in this situation. The pressure, Lethridge dances away, gets to the outside, gets up to the 50, well short of the first down. Boy, you call number nine's name so many times. Dat Wynn, the sophomore out of Rockport, Texas, and he does it again. Watch that win. Again, there's pressure by everyone. Zebby almost gets outside, but watch, he takes no missteps. Great linebacking play is when you're not having to retrace your steps, and he goes, makes a perfect beeline for the ball carrier. Dante Hall, number three in the conference in punt returns, averaging over 13 yards return, set to receive the kick by Jeremy Hernandez. I snap, A&M's coming, they hit him. Now you have to figure out what kind of penalty that's going to be as the ball rolls into the end zone. They needed three for the first down, so it's not going to matter. It will be a first down for Texas Tech. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. It is roughing. It will be a first down. First down. And a miscue by that Texas A&M punt return team. Texas A&M defensively trying to make a big play, so they put the pressure in the kicking game, and they just take the wrong angle. Typically, if you're going to block, you've got to get away where you're not going to run into the guy. You're trying to block the kick, not tackle the kicker. And so they really didn't take the right angle at all. The chance play had no chance to block and really every chance for a, a roughing the kicker. Well, Philip Myers was in on that, but there is the main culprit who is going to have a wonderful time when he looks at the film and listens to R.C. Slocum talk about it. 31 yards and penalties already for a and trying to make a big play, trying to make something happen. You give Texas A&M credit for trying to turn something to their favor. They took a chance, and it bit them back. First man uh -oh. through, the ball is loose, picked up by A&M. Sammy Morris on the fumble, fumbled. fumbled again. And I think A&M recovered the fumble from a fumble, and they did. Sean Horn is right in the middle of things. So Spike Dyke's team gets a break and they cough it right back up. Both teams on the defensive side of the ball playing very physical. Sammy Morris will get the ball stripped away and then it's picked up. Is that Rich Cody? Rich Cody, 48, picks it up. Then he fumbles. 
and then it falls back into the hands of, uh, is it Philip Myers? Sean Horn. Sean Horn, 21. And Rich Cody is down. May have just gotten the wind knocked out of him. I think that's what it is. What's that like, Steve? You're laying there and you know 70,000 people are looking at you. <laughs> You're just trying to get your breath. It just, you know, the problem is it just, it just traumatizes your chest because you can't breathe. And you know that if you'll just wait, it'll it'll come. But it, you're sitting there thinking, how stupid is this? I feel that way when they don't bring them a cookies at <laughs> halftime. The chest starts burning. <laughs> First and ten, ball on the 36-yard line. Eight and a half left to play in the third. A&M with the football. Right up the middle. Dante Hall, who had the big 70-plus yarder. Texas Tech does not fumble the ball very often. They fumble 13 times. They've lost eight of them. This is and number 14 and nine. And sometimes you got to be lucky. There's Rich Cody, 48. He gets the ball knocked away from him, and then it falls right. Big play by Sean Dunn. Sean Horn, excuse me. Pickup of eight on the play, second and a couple. First man through, a lot of running room. Tiki Hardeman from that fullback spot went right up the gut. And what did Texas A&M, when they were most prolific on offense in the first half, it was when they went right at Texas Tech. And they haven't really, Texas Tech hasn't proven that they can stop them consistently. It's been the miscues of the offense. So here they come again, right at the heart of the defense. Calvin Collins is the center, number 54, the three-time all-conference performer, very consistent in the middle. This time, Dante Hall is going to be stacked up on the play. Kevin McKellar on the stop. A true freshman out of Irving, Texas. You know, we have not seen Eric Bernard today, part of that trio that has been much ballyhooed as far as these guys being great runners. And we checked on the sideline. Brian Nooner relays it to us that nothing's wrong. He's just not playing. Now with Dante Hall going 74 yards, uh, he may be moving into that trio. Tech showing blitz and they're coming with a bunch and we have movement. Dead ball, false start. Offense, five yard penalty, repeat second down. They saw the pressure and somebody flinched. Now this A&M team is young, only 11 seniors on the main roster, two less than Baylor, so they are the youngest team, believe it or not, in the Big 12. Not a bad day. How about you averaging about, oh, let's say 20 hearts a carry. <laughs> so instead of second and eight, it's second and 13. Stewart, upstairs, first down, Texas A&M, tiptoeing down the sidelines. Derek Spiller, the tight end. They say he's an outstanding athlete with great hands, and you saw all of that on one play. Poised by Brandon Stewart to take the pressure of a blitzing. The Raider back comes in and takes him down. Jody Brown to throw it to Derek Spiller coming out out of the tight end position. Good job by Brandon Stewart standing tall. His 11th reception on the year. Keeping it on the ground, the hole, look at him go! For the goal line, touchdown a &M. Times, Steve, you've seen these little 5'9", 190-pounders with that low center of gravity take a hit, stay on their feet. This guy has done it a couple of times today. He has run very, very hard today. He's a tough load to bring down. His third touchdown rushing the football this year. He came in with 210 yards rushing for the previous seven games. He has over 100 today. First time this afternoon, the Aggies of Texas A&M have taken the lead, courtesy of Dante Hall. 10 to 6 is the score, and Big 12 football will return after these local messages. Hall with his 
rushing touchdown from outside the five and Texas A&M has their first lead of the afternoon at 10 to six. Texas A&M set to kick it away. Kyle Bryant. Every one of his kickoffs going down to this end of the field have flown out of the end zone. Side winding it once again is going to go over the end line. Let's take a look at that touchdown once again. Two things that really make the play work. Number one, the right guard right here. He's going to pull, and then, and then Dante Hall is going to force it outside. There he pulls. Now he bumps it outside, and now watch him protect the football at the end of the run. Boy, two or three times people put their hands on him. Here it is. Watch him protect the football, both hands around the ball. People have a chance to tackle him just like they did on the 74-yard run, but he ends up in the end zone. Steve, how many times as a head coach you say to your team, if we can just string a couple of good things together, maybe we'll get out of our funk. Well, they had the fumble recovery and the good run by Hall. Maybe this is what Texas A&M needs. Yeah. Hans Bard rushing to the sideline, crosses the 25 up to about the 26-yard line. I think the heat is really going to play a factor in the fourth quarter. It is hot. Oh, it is boy. humid. I think that players are going to really struggle in terms of what's going on in the field and, and especially get lulled into thinking earlier it was cooler and now you've got to really press in the fourth quarter. And I think this physical uh, test is going to be tougher on Texas Tech because of what they went through last week at Nebraska. Good point. A couple of tight ends in the ball game for Tech. The left ridge. The quick pass is complete to Kyle Alleman. The tight end makes his way up to the 35-yard line. Good for a first down. As we take a look at today's Dr. Pepper roundup again, Virginia Tech still on top, as is Syracuse. Duke on top of Maryland. Northwestern has come back to take the lead on Illinois in the fourth. Penn State, however, still trailing Indiana. Badgers and the Spartans. LSU doubling up on Mississippi State. Big 12, Iowa State scored on Baylor. Oklahoma State and Mizzou tied at seven in the first. Hands part to the outside. The pads are cracking down below us. A couple of more scores. Kansas State leading the Sooners in the first 14 to nothing. That is in Manhattan. And Utah in the whack leading Tulsa by a touchdown on a field goal. No score, Hawaii and Air Force. Air Force, of course, with that big upset over Notre Dame. That tends to make your season. Oklahoma's played much better, as you said earlier, the last two games. But I think the reality of going into Manhattan, Kansas, against a very fine Kansas right. State team that's been somewhat successful over Oklahoma the last few years. Snyder's done a great job up there. Lethridge on second and seven, and he is going to be dropped at the 30-yard line. Brandon Mitchell with his second sack of the day, seventh for the year. A preseason All-American came flying in from the side. Lethridge had no chance. Well, the other thing is, is that Zebby Lethridge, watch what happens. He holds the ball a little longer. He's not throwing on rhythm. Right there, he's got to throw it. And that's what happens, and it gives Brandon Mitchell just the step he needs to put his arms around him. Third and long. It is 15 needed for the first down. Five sacks by this Texas A&M defense today. That is a great defense. Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator, said we need to swarm when Hans Barn gets the ball. Case in point, that play. Byron, that win leading the charge against Steve. Excuse me. Byron Hanspard cannot win this game on his own. He's going to have to get some help. Zebby Lethridge is going to have to pick up the pace. But this swarming defense of this Texas A&M Aggie, they are just too tough in terms of being able to just keep hammering away the way they're trying to do it here in the early part of the second half. Good play by Dat Win, number nine. Hernandez standing at his own 16-yard line, set to kick it into the wind. And the wind is pretty good when you get up top. No pressure, and the wind is going to catch this ball. Not a very good kick. It's going to be down at the 43-yard line. Only a 27-yard kick for Hernandez, his second 27-yarder. 
Well, here's our Nations Bank upcoming schedule. Nations Bank, proud sponsor of the upcoming schedule. You can see the Raiders have a couple of home games, and they end up in Norman against the Oklahoma Sooners. They have what you would have to call a favorable schedule. Texas A&M, on the other hand, they've got only one home game remaining. That'll be against the Sooners, and they still have to go to Oklahoma State, to Baylor, and up to Austin. And that's why I like the winner of this ball game to be the real challenger again for going to St. Louis. We are getting a new star is beginning to shine here in College Station, and his name is Dante Hall, the true freshman. He hits that middle so quickly, Steve. He really does, and he's just a powerful runner. His leg strength, he sees a hole, and he just weaves his way through. I mean, he breaks tackle. There are two guys, and he's still getting the best and getting an additional three yards. First and ten again. Hall. Shaking and bacon, able to get maybe about two on the play. Give credit to that offensive line. They're not putting anybody right on top of Calvin Collins, the center. He does have a little hole, but boy, McKinney and Hamuli and Ruman and Spikes doing a good job up front. The big guys who don't get a whole lot of publicity. This line averages over 300 pounds. Second and seven. Inside of three minutes left in the third, AM has the advantage. Again, keeping his feet up to the 30-yard line before Dwayne Price made the stop. Tony Daniels ran right by him, and Hall was able to skip forward up to the 30. The mark of an outstanding running back is the ability to make people miss you, and then when they do not miss you, to make them not be able to tackle you. And the, look at the leg strength and the power. And also what I like about his running style, he protects the football. He's very protective, realizes that he's not going to turn the ball over. Again, this is a red shirt freshman running like a senior maturity wise. Following behind that big line right up the middle is Tiki Hardiman. He ends up down to the 25 yard line, a pickup of about five on the play. They're just teeing off now, and they've got that Texas Tech front line on their heels. And the reason why, they felt like run the ball right at them, Possess possession football. I mean, no drop balls, no turnovers. Make them stop you. If Brandon Stewart can't do it offensively, throw in the ball, let's go, go behind those 300-pounders. Again, Paul. The young man is impressive. Dante Hall needs to congratulate his offensive lineman. Watch Ruman and McKinney on that right side seal off and make a hole. Great job, 87. Derek Spiller, the tight end, and then Dante Hall does the rest. Wonderful running in traffic. Inside of two minutes here in the third. Aggies on the move again. They lead it by four. Hardeman, not much running room before Tony Daniels wrapped the arms around him. Now we've got a timeout. Texas A&M is going with the win, and they want to use that to their advantage just in case they don't score the touchdown. And thankful, if, if I'm Brandon Stewart and I've struggled and I've pressed, I'm loving the fact that Dante Hall is taking up the slack. Now the pressure's not on Brandon Stewart to be the big player. Now they can really, he only has to perform within his abilities. Let the young player and this offensive line carry you into the end zone. He has over 160 yards rushing the football. As you can see, the average has dropped only to 16 yards of carry, down from 20, but we'll cut him some slack. Rookie's doing everything he needs to do. That number 34 is a pretty famous number. You may want to remember a guy named Leland McElroy. He was a pretty good number 34. What you like about Dante Hall and, and really the Texas A&M team is the fact that all of a sudden, if Albert Connell's not getting it done, Brandon Stewart's not getting it done, Sir Parker's not getting it done, here comes a young freshman redshirt, Dante Hall, that's being prolific when they need somebody to be a star. Of course, when you're playing here at Kyle Field, you automatically have some type of advantage. They've only lost three games here at home in the 90s. Two of those coming this year. The Kansas State and the Colorado. Second and seven, ball is on the eight. The Aggies can get a first down without scoring. 
What a hit the ball's loose and a Texas Tech has it. Hall was hit so hard by Tony Daniels who put all 250 pounds on the freshman and Ryan Donahue scooped it up. He has two fumble recoveries on the year, but what a hit put on by Daniels. Watch it. Incredible, forceful right in the middle. Tony Daniels has had the tendency to make big plays. He's done it all season long. He had two tackles behind the line against Kansas State, tackles behind the line against Oklahoma State. Every game he's played that way. Once again, the Aggies with a golden opportunity to try to put a little pressure on Tech, and they pop the football up. Kudos to this A&M defense. They've been put in some difficult situations, Steve, but that win has led the charge and kept these guys in this football game. Well, I, I think if you're R.C. Slocum, even though the, your offense turns the ball over, you, you got to feel comfortable. you got Texas Tech pinned up against the wall. Your defense is playing lights out and doing their job. Texas Tech has not been able to put it in the end zone. I mean, this is that's a mistake, an effort mistake that happens in football, and they're not going to panic. They're in a good position. Win with eight unassisted tackles this afternoon. Sammy Morris, not much room. And like R.C. Slocum was telling us yesterday, he said, I want our guys, if they make a bad play, they fumble throw the interception just to come off the field and say, forget about it. We have to play the next play. He didn't want them looking at the scoreboard. And talking to R.C. yesterday, he has this whole thing in perspective. He says he doesn't let anything bother him as far as people writing in saying you should do this, that, or whatever. He is one of the most exceptional coaches I think, Steve, you and I have ever had the privilege of being around. Well, I tell you, he, he made a comment yesterday. I, uh, I've got a 15-year-old son, and to hear him talk about his players, the passion, the commitment that he has to his players, you get excited and you think, gosh, I, I hope my son plays for a coach like that and has that kind of opportunity. I mean, he's talking about what's the bigger piece. After the game today, they're going to have a family picnic. He says that's what's important. We're going to play well. The other thing is is not to get upset because he's getting faxes and all these things right. of people trying to do his job. And, Folks, he does a great job at what he does. And if you don't believe it, listen to Keith Mitchell talk about his coach, who he says is the best. Well, we've been at, we've had you know times we've had one-on-one -on -one, uh, dealings, and I'm, I'm gonna tell you, Coach Slocum, he's a he's a player's coach. You know, he understands. You know, he's he's been in our situations, and and, and he knows. You know, it's just a part of growing up. Sometimes. You make mistakes and you know he gets on you but i mean i think he's a player's coach and, and i wouldn't trade him for any coach in the country i mean i i mean that tremendous you know, i really mean that mitchell shares the feelings of a lot of the guys wearing the texas a m helmet we've got two of the best coaches as far as just personalities today slocum trailing only osborne and paterno as far as winning percentage third and eight for texas tech Look out, Luckridge is sacked. They're going to say it was on the one. He was about 18 inches away from costing his team a couple. of. Larry Walker has come in from that linebacker spot. He was a three-year starter. Myers took his place, and now he comes up with a big one. To show you the confidence that the defense of Texas A&M has, Typically, in long down situations, they don't take big chances like this. They did, and they were able to make a big play and put him right down inside the one-yard line. Pressure defense. He claims the head. <laughs> <laughs> what if he took it over the sideline? <laughs> That's right. Took it home with him. Somehow like a warrior. <laughs> well, Hernandez is only averaging about 33 yards. RC said, we wanted two. What was the reason? He's questioning whether or not that it was a safety, obviously, and the, the key is, is the impetus of the hit. The momentum carried him in. I think the call was correct right there at the goal line, but not in terms of a safety. Well, the bottom line is the Texas Tech, who have had their last two punts travel only 27 yards apiece, will now be snapping the ball at about the one foot line, standing on the end zone. A&M showing a lot of people on the line. Jeremy Hernandez does not like what he sees. The key is pressure 
but don't make a stupid mistake and give them a roughing the kicker penalty. a and didn't even rush. They felt they were going to get good field position. They will get great wow. field position. A 28-yard kick. All set up by the big set. Here it is. Watch where the contact is made. It's momentum, I think, that carries him into the end zone. See right there? That's a good call. Momentum stops right there. He's right there on the goal line. The ball, you want to follow the track, the ball. Good job by the officials. Well, Aaron Williams has done that. And Texas Tech defense has done that before. They took the helmet off of Andre Ware when he played for Houston a few years ago. Ball oh, bounces off one to the outside and nothing doing. Jody Brown finally comes up on a good stop. That's a tough tackle to make on Hall, but all shown, he's quite the ping pong ball. That's the last play of the third quarter. Both teams have their opportunities, but after trailing 6-3 at halftime, A&M has taken the lead. 10-6 is our score. We still have 15 minutes left from Kyle Field. Ten six is our score as we head to the final stanza. Brian Nooner is on the sideline, and the weather's changing on us. Guy, do you have your umbrella? <laughs> I better go get it. The wind is definitely picking up. There's a slight drizzle going, although I don't think it's going to have an impact on the game. Now, the wind will, as you saw in that last punt, it held the punt up, and they only got it uh, to about the 30-yard line. All right. You can see that front coming in. It's been weird weather here the last couple of days. And Steve, you get the feeling that we're heading into a showdown like it was last year. Where's Zach Thomas when you need him? Oh, absolutely. And what great effort by both defensive football teams. This is a wonderful game. Tighten up the belts, folks. We got 15 good minutes coming your way. Stewart, that may be a fumble. You got to be careful. That was very close, Steve, to throwing behind Sir Parker. That could have been a fumble. And the rule is, is when it's in doubt, when it's in question, it's always a forward pass. Did you know that? <laughs> what was we were driving from Houston? That's right. So you were, I was checking you on were the rule. checking that. That's <laughs> funny that you got to use it. He really <laughs> did check that yesterday. There's a lot of those kind of calls. Where no. When in question, it's really typically to the favor of the offense or the regarding, regarding the penalty, it's offense or defense, obviously. On uh, third and 12. They try that left side of the Texas Tech defense, and Sir Parker doesn't see a whole lot of light. Tony Daniels is there to make the stop. Daniels, who's up for the Bronco Nagurski Award, had a couple of fumble recoveries versus Nebraska last week. And it is a fourth down and eight situation. Kyle Bryant's going to come in to attempt the field goal. He's already kicked one this afternoon. That was 31 yards. This one's being spotted at the 35. It'll be a 45-yarder. His longest on the year is 51. I'm not going to get it. Should be delight. It is. That may be by design. Nope, it doesn't look it. Kyle Bryant looks a little stunned, and the coaching staff on the sideline threw their arms up. And you can see barely how it is sprinkling when you look at the unis. Well, now instead of the field goal, you're going to have to punt it. And I think Mr. Bryan is learning a lesson. Five-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. Big mental mistake by Texas A&M's kicking unit. They're going right into the end zone. The 25-second clock is right in front of them. Now you've taken yourself out of a scoring opportunity. Right. Now you've got to punt the ball. Big mistake. You can't have brain cramps in a tight ball game as the fans are starting to scurry for their rain gear, coming down a little bit harder. A line drive kick. A&M doing a nice job, and Texas Tech will have their backs to the wall. 29-yard punt, but it was down at about the four. Let's take a look at our Southwest Airlines storyline for today so far. Let's see what has transpired. The big story, of course, is Dante Hall for A&M. Yeah, he's really picked up the slack, 162 yards. A&M sacked Lethbridge six times. They've really managed him and controlled him. And the average drive started in the second half, Tex 19. Good field position, good effort by Texas A&M. Both defenses are playing well, though. Nebraska sacked 
Lethbridge six times last week. AM and doing likewise. Hansbar hits the shoulder, tries to get a lead, at least a couple to get out of the hole. And now the sun comes back out. So everybody can go ahead and take off their raincoats. I really believe that if Texas Tech is going to win the ball game, it cannot be solely upon the shoulders of Byron Hanspart. Zebby Lethridge, somebody's got to make a big play. He's got to get hot and hit his receivers. They've got to have a big play out of Sammy Morrison, or someone else has got to relieve all the pressure. I don't think they can win it on his shoulders solely. Hanspart gets one block. Stiff arms over the 10-yard line up to about the 13. Brandon Jennings on the stop, and he'll be about a yard and a half short of the first down. Tech has not won in College Station since 1984, and we have a player down, and I think it's Field Scoble. Here's a guy, a former walk-on, looks like it may be Cramps. Former walk-on, he graduated this past spring with a 3.699 grade point average in finance. Now he's taking graduate uh, courses to go to med school. Even had to miss some time early on to take some uh, pre-med exam classes to get into med school. And when you think of the name Scoville, of course, you think of the Cotton Bowl. His grandfather, one of the mainstays of the bowl game. When the coaches describe field, they really say that here's a guy, as you said, was a walk-on, limited physically, but makes plays, works hard, runs good routes, blocks, does everything this man wants out of a player. Spike Dykes had the triple bypass surgery back on May 31st, and he was so popular, and people wanted to call and see how he was doing. He had a check in the hospital under an assumed name. That's big time. I love it. Do you know what the assumed name was? <laughs> that would be the <laughs> trivia question. Good. That would be, be the good. <laughs> I didn't even ask it, you know. I guess I should have. That's kind of a no-brainer. He's a three-time Southwest Conference Coach of the Year. Of course, he took Tech to the Cotton Bowl. In 94, the first time they visited that bowl game in 56 years. Third down and just a yard. They've got it. Almost up to the 15-yard line is Byron Hanspark. He is getting his work cut out for him today. One hundred and fifty three yards on the ground. He's averaging over two hundred a game, but he's taking thirty four. carries. Right here is sixty five. That's Casey Jones. He's the guy that is what what's his size dimension? Is he about three hundred pounds? Number sixty five playing in the backfield lead, being the leading blocker. He is two eighty three. Too much time or movement. There he is. There was some question about his eligibility early on, whether or not he was on course to graduate. He is back in the lineup, and uh, that is much needed. Those face masks give him that Darth Vader look. Yeah, it? really. No penalty, no foul. Reset the 25-second clock. Casey 25-second clock was not operating. Casey Jones, Replay really, they, they like his athletic ability. 5-0 in the 40-yard dash. A little bit rusty because he's been out of action, but uh, they've moved him around because they just think, I think a lot of his athletic ability. And with Ryan Jones, the fullback out, Sammy Morris not being as physical of a blocker, that's why they put him back in that right. fullback blocking position on short yardage situations. And they're also short of Brad Spinks, the starting tight end. He's going to have knee surgery. Well, those guys have allowed Byron Hansbar to become only the second back since Timmy Smith did it in 84 to get 100 yards. This time Hansbar's tripped up by Edward Jasper, one of the team leaders on this defense. His brother Shane. All Pac-10 while at UCLA. Well, the sun is shining, but it's still raining outside. You got to love that. Only in Texas. Well, if you're a player, you don't love it because it's it's hot, it's humid, it just takes it out of you physically. It's a very difficult situation. These guys practice in it, but boy, when you've got rain and, and heat, and it's just not a whole lot of fun. It's hard breathing out there. It's thick as mud. It's so humid. Second and 11. Hanspark trying to make lemonade out of lemons and he's not going to get it. He squished. Edward Jes Jasper is the one who really penetrated and got inside and forced that play. Warwick Holdman made the stop, but it was made a lot longer before that. 
Watch Ben Kaufman, number 75. He's going to pull, but watch all the pressure. Look at all these guys from Texas A&M. Just swarm him. That's great defensive effort. Good running ability. Look at that. That is wonderful defensive effort. Fanatical effort. Good speed. Marks a great defense team. A&M's coming with a bunch on third and 15. A lot of running room for Leftridge. He needed to get to the 25, and he crosses it for the first down. That is just a pure athletic play by Zebby Lethridge. Lethridge is up. A&M is slow to get up. And they're still down. We'll check to see who that is. It's tough to see. Looks like it may be Shun Horn, number 21. We'll have to take a look. Maybe we'll see it on the replay, Steve. This is the kind of play that drives defensive coordinators. This is going to age Phil Bennett. They had him locked up. Now he uses his speed, gets outside, and makes a big play first and 10. That is Shun Horn, who was injured. But Texas Tech keeps it on the ground. Byron Hanspard, look out. Cuts to the right. What a move by Hanspard, and he could go all the way. But we have a penalty flag down as Hanspard dragged down at the one-yard line. The flag is sitting at the 30-yard line, a 70-yard run. But will it be for not? Steve, there is a huge front blowing in right now. But wow. boy, did Hanspard make a cut against that defense to pick up the 70. Maybe I take it back. Maybe Hanspard can win this game on his own shoulders. <laughs> Or his legs. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, we're going to walk it back. He really is a dynamic back. They do a good Holding. job on the stretch play. Okay. And he cuts back. I don't know if we can see the penalty right, right there. It really there. is. There it is. He gets outside of the frame. Was it holding? Uh, yeah, it was. I think okay. I think somebody grabbed uh, the jersey of Donovan Greer, who is down and injured, and maybe Donnie Hart. Because I think that block by Matt Dubuck is a good block. Donnie Hart's the one that may have reached out and touched someone. Matt, you had a decent block. You were sustaining a big guy. Well, instead of a 70-yard return or a run, they're going to bring it back from the spot of the foul. But still, Texas Tech and Spike Dykes have good field position. It's at the 40. And we've confirmed it was Donnie Hart grabbing a little jersey. Texas Tech, that was only their third penalty. They've kept the penalty total down, but it's been circumstances for Tech when those penalties have occurred. That is a costly one. Well, Donovan Greer. Donovan Greer's been slowed. He Earlier in the season, he had a turf toe injury. He had an off-season knee surgery. He is, again, favoring a knee, and I don't know, I don't recall if it's his right or left knee where he had the surgery, but it looks like, again, he's a down player. He was a question mark because he and Andre Williams both had off-season knee surgery, and they were rehabbing in the springtime. Well, Jason Webster, a true freshman, has come in at that left quarterback position. The Freshman out of Houston, Texas. Stacy Mitchell has checked into the ball game for Texas Tech. And five foot five, the third youngest wide, shortest wide receiver in college football. But Tech keeps it on the ground with Adrian Irvin, his first carry, the senior out of Houston, Texas. He came in with 26 carries, 193 yards, gets his first of the afternoon. 10 minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the ballgame. This is a stretch play, and what they do, you just you just see all these linemen, and then they'll, they'll cut back. They're looking for the cutback play. So watch what happens. Everybody stretching, zone blocking, and then he's looking for that cutback to make the play happen. That's the base play in Texas Tech's offense. Well, on second and six, Kyle Alleman, the tight end, is the one who jumped off sides of that right side of that Texas Tech offensive line. Second and six is not too bad. That's Lynn Scherler, but I don't, I'm not sure if he's the one who jumped. 
It did look like the tight end to me. They're going to bring it back. But, Steve, you're facing second and six. That's not too bad. Now you're second and 11. That changes the whole philosophy. That's right. When you're Texas Tech, you're manageable at second and five, second and six. That's what Rick Dox, the offensive coordinator, wanted to accomplish. But when you make those mistakes, then you put yourself into a position where your quarterback got to make a big play, you've got to have a big play, and they've not been uh, shown that consistently through the season. Linebackers <laughs> walking up to the line of scrimmage, and they stuck Byron Hansbard. You can see the rain continues to fall here. Keith Mitchell and Larry Walker on the stop. Have a moment like to thank Alan Cannon, the sports information director here at Texas A&M for showing us a good time, and also Richard Kilwan over at Texas Tech. Gentlemen, you made our jobs easier. And our cholesterol count <laughs> increased. <laughs> Every artery is clogged coming into today's game. Lethridge on third and 10. He's going for a pass, and it's incomplete. Into the hands of Matt Dubuck, and he couldn't hold on to it. The A&M defense stands up to the challenge again. Get down in second and long situation. Now the game shifts. Zebby Lethridge has got to go make a play, make a go throw and catch. And that's where Texas Tech was very concerned coming into the ball game. Their ability to throw and catch when it's a second and third long situation of being able to consistently do that. Jeremy Hernandez has not had much success kicking the football today. 31.8 yard average. His last three have been under 30 yards. End over end, and it's not going to stop where Texas Tech had hoped it would. It goes into the end zone, and with 9.15 left to play in the ball game, the Aggies take over, and they have the lead. A&M leads it by 4-10-6 with 9.15 to play in the ball game. It's very simple for both teams. They win the rest of their games. They're in the championship game. Albert Connell knows that. Yeah, I do, because Texas Tech, they got a lucky one on this last year because we made mistakes that beat ourselves, you know, with the last minute play, that crucial interception. And I think we're ready for them. Coach had a long talk with us yesterday about just being relaxed, you know, go have some fun, you know, just block all that, you know, other stuff out your mind, you know, just start from here because, you know, it's still a shot that we still have a shot, you know, at the Big 12 championship. So we just have, you know, we control our own destiny. So I think this game is going to mean a lot to us if we win. Oliver and Hodge, the wide receivers. Hall and Hardeman in the backfield. Hall on the pitch. Crosses the 25 up to the 27-yard line. And AM defense has done such a great job on that Texas Tech offense. Last week against Nebraska was the first time since 1993, October 2nd of 93, that the Tech offense failed to score a touchdown. This may be the second since 93. The sun back out. The rain momentarily has stopped. Eight-yard pickup on the play. Set, sets up a second and two. First down to Texas Aggies. Tiki Hardeman. This is the most important eight minutes and 35 seconds for both of these teams that they'll have this year. First and 10, A&M ball on the 31. Hall dancing around up to the 34-yard line. Daniels on the stop. This Texas Tech defense allowing just for less than 18 points a game. And considering their schedule, that is pretty darn good. They had hoped to Keep it at 17. If they said, if we can hold teams to 17 points a game, we're going to be in great shape. They are on that mark now. Second and seven. Hall breaks through the first line of defense, makes his way up to the 40-yard line. Let's check in with Brian Nooner for another injury report. Brian? 
Well, even though the uh, Aggie offense is on the field right now, we have a defensive note. Sean Horn, the fine defensive back for the Aggies, he's going to be out for the game. On that play with Zebby Lethridge, when they went out of bounds, Horn hit his head on the asphalt track just uh, that outlines the uh, playing field here. He hit his head. They're uh, taking him into the locker room to examine him. He's out for the game. What's key about that, though, Donovan Greer is out and Sean Horn. Both corners are now out for Texas A&M. Good point. And Texas A&M is going to call a timeout. No, I think they're changing their mind on it. I don't think they have any timeouts. They can't call them unless you have them. The officials are meeting, and we'll listen in. Offense, they're out of timeouts. Delay game, five-yard penalty. Mental mistake again, Steve. Quarterback's job is to know how many timeouts you have in the game, game left in your half. You have three per half, and you absolutely have to know down and distance each play, how many timeouts you have, situation in the ball game. Brandon Stewart, even though he has got less uh, experience in terms of his eligibility, in terms of being a junior, he still has to start making plays and not making those kind of silly mistakes. Good point. Third and six, nearing seven minutes left in the ball game. Paul tries to break through this time. They're able to wrap him up. Robert Johnson leading the charge from the linebacker spot. That penalty hurts a lot. Now they're forced to kick it away. Into the wind. The football may be a little wet. Shane Leckler is going to have to make sure, first of all, he just holds on to the pigskin. Oh, he gets off a good one into the wind. It's going to be Robertson backing all the way up to the 15, and he does not have much running room. Run out of bounds at about the 19-yard line. A 49-yard kick into the breeze. Hey, 6.32 left to play in the ball game, and we'll be back right after a word from Sonic Drive-In, where we invite you to drive in for a change. My apologies to the entire Stewart family. <laughs> We've got Crow up here, folks. That's right, and I'm eating it. Brandon Sturt didn't call the timeout. The freshman called the timeout. Dante Hall, the red shirt freshman, doesn't know what's on the clock in terms of timeouts, and he makes a mistake. Lethridge has a lot of time. He's going deep. He has a man wide open complete. Sammy Morris could go all the way, and he does. One yards, all set up by that play action pass, and that is exactly what Rick Dykes told us he wanted to do to try to stymie some of the speed of Texas A&M. He did it, sends his fullback, who lines up in a bunch of different positions. Steve, that was just flat out pretty. Great protection by Texas Tech's offensive line to give Zebby Leffridge plenty of time to find number 42 streaking down the sidelines. The important extra point. This is a big one. Greaser is 19 of 20 this year. They go up by three, 13 to 10, with 6.20 left to play in the ball game. Byron didn't score it. Zebby didn't score it. But boy, they can cheer it. Big 12 football will return after these local messages. Sammy Morris's long touchdown reception coming into this game was 35 yards. He doubled that and then some. And he has given his Red Raiders a 13-10 lead. A lot of time still left to play, six minutes and 20 seconds. And he writes himself after that fumble earlier, which was a big one for Texas Tech. Okay, on the replay, watch a couple of things that happens. First of all, that is Sam Morris right there. He's going to go this way and down the field. Now, he's going against Donovan Greer, number 27. Remember, Greer came off the field with what looked like a knee injury, but he was cramping up, and so he's the man that's got to cover Morris, and he's way, he's five yards off of him, and Morris goes right down the sidelines. Wonderful job by the offensive line to give plenty of space for Lethridge to work. 
And Phil Bennett knew that that play was in their book. He talked to us yesterday about it, the defensive coordinator at AM. Didn't get much help from his players. Now the Texas Tech defense is beginning to feel it. They haven't beaten AM here in College Station since 84. Still a lot of time left. This is far from over, folks. Now the test is going to be, and Texas Tech saying, all right, we put a touchdown on the board. Texas A&M, you take it 80 yards, and you score. Somebody's got to play big. We said earlier, somebody's got to make an impact. It's got to be more than Dante Hall. Second and eight. Stewart, he's going deep, and it's incomplete. Intended for Dante Hawkins. And you can see that Zimmy Leffridge has now taken over third place behind Billy Joe Tolliver in touchdown passes for a career. Ron going into the football game, a big question mark for Texas Tech were the two corners, Corey Turner, number 21, and Tony Dart, number 11. Those two guys, diminutive in style, size, 5'9 and 5'10 or 5'11, they have played six foot six today. They have been tough on the receivers of Texas A&M, and they've given up very little. Stewart's going to have to move out of the pocket, and he is going to be dumped at the 17-yard line by Tony Daniels and Monte Rager. Two things make the play happen. Number one, great pressure by that front, but the cornerbacks, the safety, they are playing very tough on coverage. They're not giving Brandon Stewart anything to throw to, and that's what Tony Daniels wants because now he can go make a play. Another good kick by Leckler. And not much running room for Clint Robertson. Albert Connell has been extremely quiet today. The Big 12's leading receiver. Here's one of the reasons why. There he is right now. He's working on Jody Brown. The Raider is right all over him. He's a cover guy. He's putting his hands on him. They're doubling up on him and making it tough. And then, and then a cornerback will pick him up, Corey Turner. So they're really putting two people. The Raider man, Jody Brown, is also playing on him. So they're just shutting Albert Connell down. He has no receptions today, and I think they've only thrown the ball to him twice, if I'm not mistaken. He's not open. Inside of five minutes, first and ten for the Red Raiders. AM defense needs a big time stop here. They haven't lost four home games in a season, or three, three home games in a season, since 1983 when they lost four. You've got to be looking when Texas AM is on offense if Albert Connell is taking two guys out of the Texas Tech defense and somebody else is open. Second and seven, 4.23 to play in the ball game. Tech leads it by a field goal. Hanspart uses his hands to keep his balance, crosses the 40 up to the 41-yard line. That went on the stop. Tech looking for consecutive wins over the Aggies for the first time since they won three straight from 82 to 84. Hanspard wow. losing it on 200 again. He may have said the pre-game pre prayer, but he's giving them hell now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's really good. And think about it. He had a 70-yard touchdown, 80-yard touchdown run taken back because of the penalty. One second to snap it, and Zimmy Lethridge calls the timeout. Three minutes and 36 seconds left. We'll step aside, and when we come back, Tech will have a third and four. We'll be back right after this word from Dr. Pepper, and it's 85 Dr. Pepper bottlers. Happy to bring you this inaugural season of Big 12 football. His team leads by three, but they face a third down and four situation. And Steve, coaches always look for tendencies in this situation. What's Texas Tech's? Well, what they really like to do, quarterback draw weak is a tendency here. The speed option or the lead option is typically what they'll run here. There's the sweep. And Hansbard doesn't have any running room, and he is dropped for a loss of a yard. 
Donovan Greer made the first hit. No, Dat Wynn made the first hit. Donovan Greer cleaned it up. Against Texas A&M, you better get out there quickly. Look at the running ability of Texas A&M. They just string it out and force him all the way to the sidelines, and they use the sidelines as a 12th man. And uh, if anybody knows how to use a 12th man, it's Texas A&M. The winner of this game keeps their hopes alive for a shot at St. Louis in the championship game against the winner of the North. Fourth and five, 2.53 to play in the ball game. High kick. The pads are popping down at the 28-yard line. Matt, or I should say Dante Hall on the return, and that wins defense made the stop. That's what they needed to do. Brian Nooner, this AM offense has to go right into the teeth of a pretty good win. How is it down there? Well, Ron, it, that wind has subsided quite a bit. I'll tell you what, when the rain left, it seems like a good portion of the wind went with it. So I know it appears at the top of the stadium like it's still there, but down on the field, the wind is really not a factor. Interesting. You can see the flags. They're on the 29, and they have two minutes and 36 seconds to operate. Complete up to the 35 yard line. Aaron Oliver, son of Al Oliver, former Major League player, no huddle for AM. Pickup of six, 220 left to play in the ballgame. AM trailing by three. Complete to Hardeman. Tiki Hardeman coming out of the backfield to get the first down. Brandon Stewart showing incredible poise. The first completion to Al Oliver, and then secondly to come right back with an underneath route. That's poise. Quarterback in command. Put him in a stressful situation. Now, Brandon, go do the things that you really believe you can do and everybody thinks you can do. 50 yards away from Pater, two minutes left to play. Lots of time. Somebody read something wrong. Albert Connell, the intended receiver, immediately after he threw that ball, Brandon Stewart looked to his wrist where he keeps some of the plays, Steve. Yep, absolutely. Albert Con Albert, I mean, Brandon Stewart put up his hands and showed him exactly. He goes inside, and the ball was thrown outside. Watch the Brandon. He goes inside, and the ball's outside on line, and the first thing Brandon Stewart is put, put up his hands to show what the route was that Brandon knew where he was supposed to go. Good job. Second and 10, inside of two minutes. Tech brings a couple of people. Stewart's pass off the fingertips of Oliver. Third and 10, 151 to play. Now the clock is elementary. It comes down to getting a first down. That's right, good job by that. those cornerbacks of Texas Tech. He had to really strong arm the ball to throw it in there, and it would have been an incredible catch because they were really blanketing on Aaron Oliver, number one. And the bad news is A&M has no timeouts left in this ball game. They look inside. Pass is complete up to about the 43-yard line is Dante Hawkins. Brian Nooner on the sideline. You're getting into this too, huh, partner? Yeah, I'll tell you what. I got a question for uh, Steve Davis. You know, because overtime is in place this year and they can tie and send it in overtime, how much do you think that's affecting the uh, play selection here? Oh, absolutely. You've got to get in position, but now they got fourth down. They got to make a play. Fourth and three. Stewart is going to be dragged down from behind by Tony Daniels with 117 left, and that may be the season for AM as far as a Southern Division Championship. Daniels' ninth tackle of the ball game. He has a sack to go along with that. Tony Daniels has made big plays all day. He has been a big play player for Texas for Texas Tech. Brandon Stewart is going to get dropped. They've got good protection around him. And then all of a sudden from the outside, there he comes, and he just loses. Chris Ruman, number 76, lets Tony Daniels beat him and put his quarterback on the turf, and with that go possibly the chances to go to St. Louis. Texas A&M cannot stop the clock. 
They are out of timeouts, and this one just might be in the books, barring something incredible. What a well-played game by both teams. They laid it all out on the field today. A&M looking for their 14th consecutive 500 or better season, and now that will be in jeopardy if this score stands up. They will fall to three and five on the year. Tech has to run one more play, and it will be all over for Spike Dykes. For the second consecutive year, he will taste victory against the Aggies, and not so many people great can say victory. that. Great victory for Spike Dykes. Big time. And the boys from Lubbock. Well Lot deserved. Eight. That's right. They were very confident in the hotel lobby this morning. They felt it was a great day for football. They thought they had a great game plan. John Goodner, their defensive coordinator. Rick Dykes, their offensive coordinator, and that is going to do it. For the first time since 82, 83, and 84, a Texas Tech team puts together consecutive victories over the Aggies of A&M. And Spike Dykes, with the schedule coming up, still in the thick of things when it comes to that Southern Division title. And think about it. They could have, have had the opportunity to beat Kansas State. And Georgia, this is a team that legitimately barring the mistakes they made, would only have one loss at this point of the season. The minister, Byron Hanspar, another incredible day rushing the football. Spike Dykes is now with Brian Nooners. Well, right now he's saluting his fans. Spike Dykes, a lot of emotion in this game. Two years in a row, but this one might be a little extra special because it's the first time since 84 you came into College Station and you picked these guys off. Well, it's a big win for us, Brian. We were very fortunate we had some good things happen to us, but our kids played hard. They played hard the whole ball game, and boys, nice win. Hard to win here, I'll tell you. Tough it's is. been a long time, and it, it was a great win. I want to ask you, uh, the passing game struggled a bit today, but to get the big play really when you need it, the play action pass, and you hit Sammy Morris wide open. Oh, what a, what a great play that was. Debbie did a great job of throwing it. I thought it was a, well, a good call. And just a great play. Big time, big time, big play for us. All right, your defense strong all day long, and when you needed it, they stop them here in the fourth down they did situation. A good job. They did a good job of doing what they had to do to win the game. I'm really proud of them. That's a good offensive football team we played today. Very good game, even though it was a defensive struggle. Tell you what, Spikes, congratulations. Have a safe trip back to Lubbock. I bet it's going to be a quick trip now. Thanks, Brian. All right. Well, you saw Sammy Morris with the winning touchdown reception from Zebby Lethridge. That was the difference he made up for an earlier fumble. That covered 81 yards. Zebby and company are going home with a victory. We'll be back right after this message from Dr. Pepper. Would you like a chance to kick a field goal for $1 million? See specially marked Dr. Pepper 12 packs for details. Big 12 football has been brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. And by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. And by Mobile Motor Oil. At Mobile, we've been changing oil for over 125 years. Texas Tech wins it. The final once again, 13 to 10. And it was a dandy. And Steve, you mentioned at the top that Byron Hanspart cannot win this game alone. And when it came down to it, he didn't. It was Lethridge and Morris chipping in. On a really intelligent call by Spike Dykes, the offensive coordinator, to use that offensive line, great protection, going up against a somewhat hobbled Donovan Greer, puts Sam Morrison in the slot, down the sidelines, big play, and Zebby delivered a perfect pass. Now let's take a look at today's player of the game, and it is Byron Hanspard, brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. 198 yards, 41 carries. Well, they said he, they wanted him to have 150-plus yards, and he got it. And on the wings of Byron Hanspard's prayers, this team takes away a victory. And after the ball game, Byron Hanspard, the licensed Pentecostal minister and our player of the game, gathers the team at the 50-yard line, and he gives them a little message and a little prayer. And now our Sonic play of the game. Today's play of the game is brought to you by Sonic, where we invite you to drive in for a change. 
Well, we had a bunch of them, both offensively and defensively. We could have chosen for our play of the game, but we're going to go to the one that won it. Lethridge on top, locks a tie, finds Sammy Morris, makes the catch, and he takes it the remaining distance. That gave them the lead, which they held on. 13 to 10 is the final score. That is our Sonic play of the game. We'll step aside for a moment and have some final thoughts when we return to Kyle Field after this. Tech wins it. They go to 5-3 and three on a year. They win it 13-10 to 10 as the final. And here are the updated division standings in the South. Texas at 2-1. and one. Texas Tech goes up to 4-2 and two in their schedule is very, very favorable. They only have Texas and Oklahoma left to play. Texas at home, Oklahoma in Norman. A&M falls to one and three and out of the picture for that Southern Division Championship. And they've got a tough road ahead if they want to get that 500 mark. And Steve, you know, you talk about that schedule. Texas Tech has proved themselves legitimate. Yeah, really, when you talk to Spike Dykes, he really felt like last week that having played Nebraska, they want another chance. They want to go to St. Louis, and if Nebraska's the uh, team that, to beat in the north and they beat Colorado and they win out, they want another chance because they think they match up very nicely, and they did very well against them last week, and so they want another chance. This team will go in there next time not as intimidated. Let's talk about AM on the other hand. R.C. Slocum did a great job in coaching this football team, getting ready. They just didn't get the breaks again. Well, they still sputtered on offense. I mean, that when you look at it, they sputtered on offense. They could not get the big plays in the passing game. Connell couldn't catch a pass. They couldn't throw a pass to him because those cornerbacks of Texas Tech did a wonderful job. Final stats on the ball game today. Look at the total yards in terms of Texas Tech. They dominated in time of possession, really controlled the ball game. And again, the passing yards, 54 out of of Texas A&M, that I think is the is the most revealing stat. Good job by both teams, but Texas Tech the big winner today. And Connell, no receptions today in the ball game, and Texas Tech wins it, 13 to 10. Coverage of today's game has been produced by Robert Steinfeld, directed by Ken Miller, our technical director Richard Harlan, associate director Tom Stoner, associate producer Eric Josephson. Production operations, the ladies that keep us on the road, Tammy Rippey and Judy Jackson, our director of productions, Kevin Landy, and executive producer, Patrick McClanahan. Remember to join us in two weeks for our next Big 12 telecast for a game that will be announced next weekend. Once again, the final score, Texas Tech wins it 13-10 over the Aggies. For Steve Davis, Brian Duner, and our entire crew in College Station, I'm Ron Thulin. Thanks for watching. This has been a presentation of Liberty Fox Sports in association with the Big 12.